Hello and welcome to Movie Phone. I'm George Clooney and this is Matt Damon and Grant Hesloff. And we're here to talk about our new movie, Monuments Men. We'll answer some questions that you sent and uh, some that are unscripted. This is from Jacob S. on Facebook. Which of your movies would you want someone to lay down their life to protect if the last copy of the film was ever in danger? <laughs> I'll answer that. I know that. <laughs> you, you I know that. <laughs> Which one are you going to do, Batman and Robin? I look, it's a, it's a Return, Return of the Killer. Return of the Killer, no, Killer Tomatoes. Batman and Robin's a piece of cultural heritage. We've got to hold on to well, that. The funniest thing is, before Batman and Robin, I starred in a film called Return of the Killer Tomatoes, which in that movie book was called The Worst Film Ever Made. So it actually, you do need to save it. And yeah. then I did Batman and Robin, which is now called The Worst Film That Was Ever Made. So I, I think I have a... Sophie's Choice right there. Yeah, it's really a tough one to pick. I'm going to pick... Um, out of sight. Out of sight. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you recently gave up being a gondolier in Venice. Yes. But you decided to continue to wear the shirt. Yes. In sort of as a, in support of other <laughs> gondoliers. Well, it's, it's something not a lot of people know about. Um, you know, obviously the hats I don't wear as much in, inside. But, is um, that how you broke your collarbone on the, the pole? Uh, it was, <laughs> that so is how. You hit a low bridge. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to duck. But you... I, broke, I broke my collarbone. <clears throat> um, my, my pole got caught. Mm -hmm. In a, uh, uh, you know, there are a lot of divots in those kind of. The, you don't want to get your pole shallow. caught ever. You don't want to get your pole that's caught a, in a divot. <laughs> no, never. that's for you kids at home. Don't ever get your pole caught in a divot. George is famous for his on-set pranks. Really? What was his best prank during filming, and who was involved? Uh, well, oddly enough, it was Matt. George would have Matt's pants taken in about an eighth of an inch every time Matt would leave, and Matt left quite a bit because he was going back and forth family and all. So every time Matt would come back, uh, his pants were a little tighter and he was trying to lose weight and he was like, what the, f you know, what these pants? It was shocking to me that you had enough time to even tell the wardrobe department to do that. I was motivated by that one. There's always time for, there's always time. There's always time for a little sickness. No. If you had a talk show, who would be your first guest? Obviously there will be no time for Kimmel. No, I would never let Kimmel on the show. Who's uh, Kimmel? Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think he's... Um, it does it, infomercials. <laughs> um, uh, my first guest, I'd aim high, I'd go for the president, I think. That would mm -hmm. probably be my first, I'm gonna take it, ask. Yeah, you know. gonna ask big. Gonna ask. I'd probably end up with you, but you know. Listen, I'm cheap. Yeah. I'll, sh I I'll show up on unscripted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what was, what was for you the most challenging part to directing Monuments Men? To writing, directing, producing, and starring, I should say, in Monuments Men? I would Men. say... The partnership with Grant? It has always been a very difficult thing for years and years and years. Grant and I started out as young, young ingenues together. <laughs> and, uh, and it's been a difficult time most of the time. I think really, if I was to be honest, it would be working with the, the egos of all of these actors. Um, Kate Blanchett, I know, she's you know an Oscar winner and all that stuff, but she was very demanding. Yeah. And, and now she, that she was nominated. Oh, yeah, she was nominated this morning. <laughs> we tried to do a press conference with her. Forget it. That was ridiculous. Thank God we got her when we did, because there'll be no talking to her no, now. No, I mean, she's no way. And Bill Murray, oh. the whole time. Which yeah. I was surprised, because you know, he's not too. young. And he doesn't slur when he talks. No, no. Odd. And Goodman, um, he's a little light with his fingers. He steals a lot of stuff. Yeah. Every time you get your per diem, which is the money you get to, sp to buy food when you're in Germany, uh, I'd find that uh, mine would be missing a you lot. You had a horrible gambling problem. Oh, is that what it yeah, was? It's oh, really, that, it's, that, it's that, that what you're talking to is more of a symptom of what, you know, oh, it's, yeah, it's bigger problem underneath. We got a bigger problem. He was betting on the German football the whole time. Ah, uh, yeah. that's what you can't do. You can never do that. Who are your favorite actors turned directors that inspired you to do it yourself? I would say, first, without question, and I think you guys will all agree, Michael Bay. Yes. Um, a lot of people don't know about his acting. As a young, he was a young boy, a young child actor. Yeah. Little, little Michael Bay. Little um, Mikey Bay. Little Mikey Bay, they called him. Um, <laughs> well, you know, the, the, the obvious ones, Charles Lawton. <laughs> he is, actually. Clint, obviously, because he's, he's done it very well. Uh, Woody, I suppose, one of the best ever, if you think about it. But there have been a lot of good actors turned directors over the years. Little Angry Stevie Soderbergh. You know, little Angry Steven. Remember Little Angry Steven? Yeah. And uh, he ended up being a 
really good director. He directed you in uh, uh, several films, several including films. Um, In Front of a Candelabra, I believe. In Front of a Candelabra. And uh, unless you do something with Steven, I think I hold the record now. I think I'm You've at seven one. films and you're at six, so. And you and I have done six films together? Mm hmm says a lot about my patience. Taste. <laughs> or smarts. <laughs> or my intelligence. Yeah. From Naomi in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, if you could have any famous piece of art in the world, what would you choose? Wow. Uh, well, there are so many. I mean, that's kind of an impossible question to answer, but any one piece. I guess I'd take the David out kind of in front of my house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? just, you, a, just for bragging, right? Just, yeah. <laughs> hey, look at that. <laughs> would you paint it at all, or? Yeah, no, I'd definitely do some work do to some it. Do some change. Yeah. 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 yeah, Some augmentation. Some augmentation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's something you're good at that's totally useless? Oh, my God. Did, we don't, do we have enough time? I think we, but I mean, we should just take the most the, useless. He's the king of useless. I can do almost everything useless possible. Do the, this thing. You could do that right now. What's that? The, the, the. Snappy? I can do this? Wait. Wait, now I can't even do it. See, now I'm, that I'm even useless at. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, what's some useless things, though, I can That do? was pretty useless. That was useless? <laughs> yeah, you think? it was totally useless. I've got more useless things. Um, uh, I have a lot. I think most of my life uh, has been perfecting my uselessness. I think that's fair to say. I could do almost everything that would never come in handy. I can get stains out of things, but I think that's useful. I think that's entirely useful. That was one of my Utility. jobs. Utility. I had a... Uh, I worked at a department store, and uh, people would bring in their shoes, and I would get stains out of their shoes. And you were a cartoonist, too. I did caricatures. Caricatures, of yeah. I also was a uh, cornhole stretcher. And... Does that sound right? Does that sound right? Does that sound right? Women would come to... Women would come with their... Does that sound right? Women would come with their shoes. We get it. We get it. With corns on their feet. Oh! <laughs> And I had a piece of equipment that I have at my house now, which looked like a Mr. Potato Head, and it had a plastic corn on it. And my job was to find where the corn on her foot matched inside the shoe by putting blue chalk on her corn and putting her foot inside that nasty shoe and then pulling it out and then putting this piece of plastic corn there and stretching the corn. Now, when you applied for the job. <laughs> <laughs> That's a useless skill. Truth. But it's true that <laughs> women with corns usually are the, ho are the hottest. <laughs> Thank you, uh, George. Thank you, Grant. Uh, and thanks to Movie Phone for having us. Uh, thanks to all of you for watching and sending in your questions. And uh, please see our movie, Monuments Men. We're told just now by Sony uh, that if you see the film in the opening weekend, you will get a free car from Sony. So uh, please, you know, take them up on it.